greatest misconceptions that high school students have is how much effort it is to get into university. Guess what? Once you get there, it's far more work to stay in and do well and not flunk out. And one of the hardest courses students find if they go and follow business is accounting. Because the first year accounting course that everyone has to take in any business program is literally grade 11 and grade 12 accounting in the first course. Um, they probably cover grade 11 anywhere from one week to two or three weeks. So that's how fast they go through it. So this gives you a chance to actually get that head start over some of your peers. But more importantly, like even if you don't go into business, everybody should know at least a little bit about accounting. Because even, say, in education, when we sit down and we talk about budgets, the numbers we talk about in those budgets come from the accounting system from the school board. Like, whether you're in business or not, every organization has some form of accounting system that helps them monitor and track progress and monitor results. So if, you're, if you can't speak the language of business, which is accounting, then it's like being in a foreign country where you don't speak the language. People can take advantage of you, you don't really fully understand what's going on, and you can't participate. So congratulations on making a wise choice. That brings us to the second thing I want to say, and it's really important. This course is like no other in high school. It is very much an academic skill course. And so in the same way that in music class or in auto shop, woodworking, uh, whatever, right? In art, you can't build a skill by watching people do it. You actually have to try it and practice it and hone your skills yourself, right? Well, in accounting, you're learning the skill of accounting. You're not memorizing a bunch of stuff. You're actually learning how to do it. So if you're not someone who's willing to do homework or do the practice exercises, you're not going to learn accounting. Uh, in my regular physical classrooms, I actually I stand in front of students and I say, there's one thing that'll make or break you in this course. And I tell them that one thing is doing the work. So you have to make sure you do the work. And the reason is that accounting is probably the most cumulative course in high school it's a cycle so if you if you bomb step one then you can't do well in all the other steps because the numbers that step one produces are used in step two and then and so on and so on so you have to do the work to be successful so then let's get into it before we can actually start to really learn about accounting we need to talk the same language and there's a lot of everyday uses of terms that are different in business than what we use in everyday life. One of them, for example, is capital. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this first activity right here called synonyms. And that's just to get us all on the same page. If you click that, you can make yourself a copy and make a little note right from this video. The first thing you have to understand is that this red bar up here, this is what we're going to use in this course. These are our official terms. And what's listed below them are synonyms that are in common uses, not just in business, but in just everyday conversation, right? So for example, another word for liabilities is debt. We tend to use debt more commonly, right? But liabilities is the technical term we're going to use in accounting. Equity, might not be sure what that means, but it means the same thing basically as your wealth. And in accounting, when you use capital, it means the same thing. Capital is a, is a nasty word in English. It has a whole bunch of different confusing meanings. But in accounting, it means your net, your net worth, your wealth. Revenue can have a whole bunch of different terms too, but we're going to use revenue. And expenses often are used synonymously with, like interchangeably with the word cost, right? But the, the official term we're going to be using is expense. And then net income um, means essentially revenue minus expense, but it has some other terms. Probably the most common is profit or loss, right? So the first thing we have to get clear then um, is what do they exactly, like what do they mean specifically? So I need to give you a definition because we're going to come across transactions where you're spending money, but just because you spend money doesn't necessarily mean, for example, it's a cost, an expense in other words. So let's get ready. Let's do some of these definitions. You can write them down. You can look them up on the internet, but I'm going to give you a couple of, of quick everyday English definitions of these. But first, let's... Um, Let's just, let's just, we just put, let's point something out here. We just talked about a couple of terms that are going to come up a lot in accounting. And one is the first, one of the first things you need to do is make sure you clarify the difference between the term gross versus net. You're going to see them a lot. Gross clearly is, is, comes from, you know, big and huge, not gross disgusting, but large. So gross means essentially, for example, like gross revenue, all the money you've collected, all the money you've brought in before you do any deductions or adjustments. Whereas anytime you see in a word, 
the word net, there's been some kind of mathematical calculation. And in grade 11 accounting, it will almost always be certain types of deductions. So that's why your income would be a gross total revenue money coming in value. And net income would be all your revenues money coming in minus your costs. In other words, your profit. So let's quickly go back then and look at these terms. And we can start by simply defining assets as something that you own. Okay? And a liability is something that you owe to others. Equity, though, is different. Equity is not, uh, it's not, a, it's not a cash value. So you're going to get into trouble in this course when you write answers or explain things or when you think of things. If you, if you confuse this concept of cash or we'll also say money. So a common English expression is, I, I, we're going to go, this business is making a lot of money, right? Which is completely confusing in in accounting because these things do not equal profit I mean that's probably a surprise to most of the students who take this course in fact it would be a surprise to most adults when they when they hear in the news that you know such and such a corporation made a billion dollars profit it doesn't mean they made a billion dollars cash in fact they could have lost cash over the course of the year so there's a couple of reasons for this that we'll go into as the days go by but one of the main reasons is that the cash basis of accounting is something you know a small business might do run out of the back of your you know garage but the accepted method of accounting is called the accrual basis of accounting and that's where you do things like recognize revenue when you've earned it not necessarily when you've been paid so this is really not not used and for big companies or international firms or firms that have basically borrowed money uh, or that need to be audited they can't use this method they have to use this one but that results in profit not being the same thing as cash so cash does not equal profit and it doesn't equal equity all right profit is a change in equity or a change in wealth value not a change in cash value the next thing you have to clear up in your head so equity not being a cash number it's actually a calculation it's a concept and if you want to know what that actually is for to, to write that down what it really is is this fundamental accounting equation and you can write that if you like this is the fundamental accounting equation and you can remember this now or later it's because it's a little it's a, a little bit early for this uh the next lesson is where we focus on this but it's essentially assets the things that you own minus your liabilities i don't have a lot of room so i'm just gonna write this is equal to your net worth or your equity so equity isn't necessarily a dollar value for instance if you had 200 uh, i don't know uh, uh you think of i don't know you're you got a, some a headset worth 200 bucks and it's the only thing you own in your whole life your whole world and you owe somebody fifty dollars well then what you own is worth 200 and you owe somebody 50 which means you're worth 150 but if you remember you own a nice valuable headset for listening to some tunes you don't own any cash so this 150 of equity is doesn't represent any cash at all because you don't have any so it, it's a equity is a concept right it's a calculation it's not cash and when we get into actual transactions this fundamental accounting equation is the way it's usually presented is it's rearranged so it's assets it's the same equation it's just a little bit of algebra we move the liabilities to the other side we got assets equals liabilities plus equity so a proper definition of equity like the technical one is that equity represents the owner's claim on the value of the assets of the business so that brings us to revenue and revenue quite simply is all the money earned from the sale of goods and services and note very very important i didn't say all the money received or collected because i'm sure if you have a job and many grade 11 students will have a part-time job if you worked a couple of days or even a week or two at the end of i don't know say january but you haven't been paid yet and you know, we're into february well you would think that you'd earn that money right if you quit they would have to pay you the money they owed you right well it's the same concept Revenue represents all the money that has been earned from the sale of goods or the production of services, not necessarily the money that has been paid. Earned is the key word. And it's similar with expense, except expense is a bit trickier. It's probably the hardest one to get clear in your head. So if a business, for example, spends money on a delivery van, right? That is not an expense. But if they spend money on gas, to put in the delivery van 
or spend money on salaries for the driver of the van, the, those are both expenses, but the van isn't. And the reason is, is that when you take the, your wealth that is in the form of cash and you convert it into a van, you still have the wealth. You still have the van. You can't store labor, though. And the gas, yeah, you can store it for a couple of days, but it'll be gone. So those are expenses. So the definition of an expense is money owing, again, don't necessarily have to be paying it right now, but money that is owed for the purchase of goods and services to generate revenue for your business that is consumed in the process. That's what expense means, right? To be consumed or used up. And the last one, again, is a, is a concept. It's a calculation. It's net income. And net income is simply the difference between revenues and expenses. Right? So I'm just going to write profit or net income down here is equal to all your revenues minus your expenses. Again, it's a change in wealth number, not a change in cash number. That's basically it. You can go on to the next lesson, which is this activity here, forms of business ownership. And if you've taken grade 10 business, this should be mostly review. The instructions are right in the file. Make yourself a copy uh, and take a stab at it. And I'll send out sort of an answer key once people have had a chance to, to try it.